how is your condition? What is new? Well, by God's grace, I'm trying to survive. Mm -hmm. I am on my book, and God willingly, before the end of the year, I will be out and launching. And people like Mr. Augustine will be invited to get the best copies because set people encourage and inspire me a lot. So your book is about what? Graph. It's about my life. Your life? Yes, from BBC, from my um, school days, right up to BBC. And then the greater part is when I made money through the devil's prompting. And I thought the whole world belonged to me. But at the end of the day, nothing evil comes cheap. Anything that is evil looks easy and rosy. But when it's right beyond the surface, you realize that it's a big mess. So I'm writing this book for posterity. That anybody who reads it will realize that <laughs> easy come, easy go. And you may not be even lucky to lose your money. You'll be lucky if you, your life ends up intact. What is the title of the book? Um, candy White. Candy White. Candy White. You know, uh, my, candy nickname, wine. Yeah, my nickname used to be Jeff Candy White. Jeff Candy White. Yeah, candy White because candy is sweet, wine is sweet. Two sweet things blend together. But then, <laughs> the devil don't give anything for free. It will give you sweetness, and then <laughs> at the end of the day, it will give you sorrow, and it will give you bitterness, yes. And so, the, the, the title of my book is Candy Wine. Candy Wine. Yes. Up from the back from the dead, yes. But you know, for us, uh, I think I remember we, the first time we had interview was two years ago, right? Yeah, two uh, thousand two years. years. 17. That was my first interview anyway. That's right. And a lot of people were saying that I couldn't ask, ask you a lot of questions. But you know, it was my first interview. Yes, uh, having you try my best to interview you and uh, all that on this particular addiction thing. Yes. But uh, uh, we've done, for those of you who don't know him, we've already done interview. We've spoken already yes. almost two years ago. Know, and the video is on the channel, yes. SVTV Africa. I discovered him, all right? That's Talking true. about coming to TV, what's it deeply right? Yes, yeah. I discovered him. Yeah. We had a lovely chat on our channel, so the video is there. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about your state now. Yeah. I don't know. Have you stopped? Have you been able to stop the drug? Or yeah. you still facing yeah. some yeah. challenges? Drug? And yeah, people out there don't like the truth. Uh, they are very, very different people with different perspectives. The people who sell the drug, are not happy that I come on air. Why? Right? Because when the children, children see it, the youth see it, they will be scared from going to try it or being adventurous. Oh, let me try it once. Once and you are addicted for uh, a lifetime. Because when you try it, this thing is like chasing the wind. The evil behind it is so strong that when you try it the first time, it's so nice, so sweet. Uh, I've tried alcohol, I didn't like it. I've tried weed, it makes me very calm. But this thing's uh, high is something else, like you are chasing the wind. Mm. And the first time you feel good, the second time, but trust me, by the time you are continuously using it for one week, you get up, you start to have stomach, stomach cramps, you have uh, leg cramps like rheumatism, and now you can't punch him without it. You think it's malaria, but without it, you can never punch it. Either drug with opium inside, like heroin, like uh, tramadol. Actually, tramadol is a painkiller, uh, like um, how do we call uh, heroin? Morphine is the sister to um, heroin, that's morphine. During the first, second world war, when a soldier gets injured and they want to amputate, they give you wine uh, or brandy, and then they hold you down by force to amputate it. But then when they discovered morphine, they realized that it, it, it brings down even the most excruciating pain, like cancer and things. 
But then, even doctors prescribe it and you have to take it with discipline. Follow the prescription. If not, you will be addicted to it for life. When you quit, it's not even quitting, which is, uh, quitting is very difficult. We don't have drug treatment centers here. They take you to mental hospital or to Gobi. Mental hospital, I'm sorry about the doctors there, but then they treat psychiatric cases like uh, madness. And then you, they give you method, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Lagati. Lagati makes you like a dummy, steep. Heroin is the drug I fear the most. But then, so my system through a medicine called methadone, I was able to clear the system. There's this thing called hypothalamus. It's a part of the brain that gives memory and feeling. Whilst getting high, it creates an artificial um, emotion. But when you quit the drug, there's a vacuum. Even nature abhors vacuum. You start to feel bad, and that's where the suicidal tendency comes. So if you don't get a job or you get something doing with your hand or mind, you'll be relaxing in and out. That's my situation. But I don't go to the ghetto that I'm going to buy drugs. Like before, when I do, I wake up, I have to go look for me. Yeah. But sometimes, you have had a couple of accidents, when the pain is extreme, I'm forced to go and uh, get heroin. Then, when I get it, and I, the pain goes down, there's this medicine called Gevato. I don't know its composition. It's a very good pain killer. Because I fear that if I should get seriously addicted like before, then I'm in trouble. There are a lot of places claiming to be detoxifying people. I don't want to mention their name, but they are bullshit. But I they know. are only taking advantage of the drug addicts and then the international community. We are taking care of drug addicts and things. They send them money, they send them clothes, and then what happened? They treat the addicts there like um, a kind of slave camp. The question is that, are you ready for this? I am, so more, can, than, I am more than ready, but I have not been to the place. I have tried there. many places. Uh, look, let me tell you, we have got famous people. Whitney Houston, um, Bobby Brown, they got seriously addicted. They have to wash your system. Mm -hmm and then you start all over again but then if they don't wash your system and there's still traces inside you you will get to the food they will wash your system at house of st francis you know i've sent former blaster player there let me show you a picture of him he's looking fine his name is Cassia. he's that former house of player now you see him it's looking fine if you wash the system it's on treatment six months program uh, yes, that, the that's, money that's, is expensive. that's good to hear but you see if you are addicted to cocaine or alcohol when they take you there you don't get it you can use willpower to quit this one this girl too was on time the rock the heroin small girl 14 year old girl you see how it's looking now yeah. so that's what i'm saying that if you are ready to stop. I, I am, I am ready, ready until, until, until I get there and I see the situation there. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not ready to go to a slave camp. No way. It's not a slave camp. What I'm saying is that I am not like uh, that we have one somewhere. I don't want to don't go there and leave. Yeah. Yes. So you mean to go there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to mental hospital. One of the first people who went there. There is a saying that it's good. Um, to mourn with a wise person than to sing with a fool because when you mourn with a wise person you find you find solution and you'll be affected by it yes positively but if you uh, sing with a fool you will be following the fool and you will never make any progress people out there is unfortunate when you hit them with the absolute truth, they tend to use it against you. Oh, the guy is still at it. This, 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 this. Like that kind of uh, attitude, stigmatization. People go to jail, they come. Hey, somebody wants to help you. Yeah, this yeah. person has been to jail. Are you not afraid of me? Then the people will yeah, yeah, Yes. Yeah. I really want, I don't, this, I'm a big boy. I don't want my situation to be like this. So I'm not deeply into it. 
but I went out for about six months and then the heroin in my system would go completely out because the methadone that was given to me was very few so I use it disparately that is I did not finish the treatment because the medicine uh, was very limited somebody brought it to me from Holland so after it got finished I tried to use willpower but still there is heroin in my system and I don't take alcohol so sometimes the pain comes, the discomfort comes, and then you are forced to go and look for a kick, not to get high, but to be normal, yes. But because I don't want to continue using it, um, they have to get a complete detoxification where there will not be any traces of heroin in my system. Then I know I'm free. And I hope there are people, negative-minded people, don't use it against me or use it against people who really are addicted? Your son can be addicted. Your father can be addicted. The fact that somebody is addicted doesn't make him a, a corner or a useless person or a loser. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's a misadventure. Yeah, and then you go and you fall in the trap and you don't know your way out. You don't have the strong willpower. And so much as you see yourself gravitating towards the street, you are like you can't help yourself so if somebody come out and say he needs help uh, we should not stigmatize the person uh, yeah oh this one he can't quit oh this one he will die with it oh this one uh, he, he stop and he goes back and think it's so demoralizing it's so dis um, discouraging yeah because you know why we are in a kind of system you see People are so mean and wicked that because you are smarter than them or maybe educated, not only school-wise educated, I'm talking about wisdom of the world. You are now, they want to use it against you. They are happy, oh, look at him. Uh, this why he was once a baron. Today, look at him. Uh, it can happen to you. The road of life is rocky and you can stumble too. As you point your fingers, someone else is getting you. So you don't judge people, you don't condemn people because you don't know tomorrow. That's right. Thank you so much, Fadio Dunk, for the great man himself uh, for passing through. This is why I be free star. Uh, this is my permitam. My English stuff is short because I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the St. Francis. Place. House of St. Yeah, Francis. Yeah. We have lessons that we learn out of it. I'm looking forward to the uncharted future that is a uncharted future because as for the past, it's past. And trust me, when I come out fully, I am going to encourage a lot of people who are still trapped that this is it. And if you see me, maybe I will be like somebody who is carrying um, macho machines. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, nice talking to Bajo Donko. So if anything, just call us on 0244. 790902 SBTV Africa SBTV Africa Foundation. As you know, we've been doing for people. We've sent few people to the rehab center. And Bajo Odonko, we're also asking you people to support him as he's ready to change uh, totally uh, through St. Francis. So I thank you all that, that, for subscribing to our channel. You to to um, shed the um, past, the outdated okay. past. If you say change, you have uh, said. Thoroughly and absolutely. Thoroughly yes. and absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Padre Udonko. So keep supporting SBTV Africa and SBTV Africa Foundation. Thank you. Tua.